Thank you, Brian. We appreciate Brian and the support of all of the department's executive leadership, the support that they provide for transportation research in Oklahoma. I can't tell you how much we have conversations about this during our meetings, and we're very thankful for that. Our first keynote this morning will be presented by Ms. Tara Brown. Before I introduce her, I would like to remind everyone that across from the check-in in that room is where all of the demos, I believe, will be this morning. And then the poster viewing that we'll have a little bit later in the morning is throughout the hallways. Ms. Brown was named the Oklahoma Transportation Cabinet's Deputy Chief Innovation Officer in February of 2022. Tara, I can tell you, is invaluable in her role to the department, and I appreciate her so much. She assists me in overseeing all modernization and innovation-related efforts. This includes the Autonomous Vehicle Working Group, the Work Zone Safe Program, and research activities for both the Oklahoma Department of Transportation and the Oklahoma Turnpike Authority. She has been with ODOT more than 10 years and holds a bachelor's degree from OSU in sociology. Originally from Ardmore, she lives in Moore with her three children. Please join me in welcoming Ms. Brown to the stage. Good morning, everyone. How are we today? Good. Um, I'm happy to be here. I'm excited to have all of you here. Um, I, what I'm going to be talking about today um, is some of the activities that has been going on with the Transportation Cabinet, but specifically um, the Department of Transportation. So um, we're going to kind of talk about from modernization to normalization and what that really means. So we're going to kind of start. Uh, from the past of, of what got us to this journey and where we're at today. So <clears throat> back in February of 2020, some legislation was going through. Um, Senate Bill 1775 was a part of it, and it was introduced. And ultimately, what it would have done was integrated the Turnpike Authority and the Department of Transportation. Um, and at that time, you know, Secretary Gatz and Governor Stitt had a conversation um, and it came to fruition that through the governor's uh, transformation initiative, the cabinet was uh, instead afforded the opportunity to work with a consultant, which is Guidehouse, to reimagine how we collectively would operate um, in order to meet the transportation needs of the state long term. So ultimately what that meant was how could the cabinet agencies work together without officially being um, transformed and combined together. So um, through this activity, along with Guidehouse, um, there was a transportation modernization committee um, put together of ODOT employees, OTA employees, also aeronautics employees as well. And that's where we got a lot of the information in the background of what was going on. So in order to move forward, you kind of have to understand where you're at. So in, in context of that, Guidehouse helped us get a current state assessment of where all three agencies stood at the moment uh, in regards to how we were doing our business processes, funding, um, finance, budget, technology, things of that nature, design. Um, and what came out of that is a current state report, and then also they came up with a draft recommendation report of maybe how we could be, be better, do better, and be more efficient. So out of, those, um, out of some of those activities, we decided to come up with guiding principles for how we would look at modernization and also a vision of what we were wanting to do. So as you can see, um, the transportation modernization vision that we were trying to strive for and still continue to today is to be an efficient, innovative, and customer-driven organization working collaboratively to provide safe, modernized, integrated, and sustainable transportation options throughout Oklahoma. Now, while that's a mouthful, we all do understand that that is, uh, takes a lot of effort to also see that um, to fruition. So we decided to come up with some guiding principles to see how we could get there. And as you can see, those are improved collaboration, enhanced innovation, greater communication, not only internally, but also externally, exceptional customer service, increased efficiency, and rapid adaptability. 
And although all of these are very important, I think all of us can contend that number six, rapid adaptability is something that we always face. We always have to um, be ready to uh, adjust and transform whatever we're currently doing at the time to move forward and also be able to serve the citizens of Oklahoma and the traveling public. So a little bit of information about kind of what we've done through this process um, and working um, on a lot of these different activities of what we've done. So, <clears throat> excuse me, we've been tasked with assisting ODOT and OTA um, with change initiatives, improvement projects, key performance indicator um, def definitions, and standard operating uh, procedures. So a lot of what we uh, need to, to change and do to become more efficient, we have to know, again, where we stand. So in order to do that, um, a lot of different areas are taken through the implementation process. Um, we want to know how they work, what they do, what technology they might need to do their job, how we can help improve what they're currently doing, and what resources they're going to need to be more efficient and adaptable. So if you can kind of see to date, um, we've completed 12 change initiatives, and really what that means is working with the different areas to help improve and then to become more efficient through their processes. We've uh, produced 284 improvement projects. Um, we have KPIs, which are key performance indicators, defined for 34 areas across the cabinet. And our SOP program was implemented, and we currently have 164 created to date. Now that might seem like a lot, but when you have agencies as big as the Department of Transportation <clears throat> and the Turnpike Authority, 164 seems rather small. But at least we're working and making our way towards capturing that knowledge management uh, that we need because our um, workforce is about 40% eligible to retire. So we have to make sure that we are capturing that knowledge before it goes out the door. So as you can kind of see right here, some of the change initiatives in the areas that we've worked with have been multimodal, strategic communications, audit, procurement, contract compliance, and you can see the others listed as well. Um, a lot of these activities are from the back office, which is the administration side of the house. And what we're doing is getting ready to start working with the front side of the house, which is operations in January. So some of the different improve, improvement project examples that we have, you can see up here. Um, of course, I'm not gonna read them all, but while we go through these implementation processes with the areas that you just saw previously, we, we start to ask them what their needs are, what their pain points are, and how we can help them if we can get them the resources that they need. And sometimes it might just be internally, we need to do better and not be so siloed within the areas. But as you can see, developing automations to streamline process, we've learned that a lot of the times technology seems to be what is holding us back. And if we can find um, the resources in technology, a lot of this stuff will be streamlined and more efficient. Um, some of the other items are developing service level agreements internally as well as externally, but this is the way to clearly define roles, responsibilities, and dependencies to ensure adequate service levels. So sometimes we find ourselves, you might have finance as part of a process, and so for our Office of Innovation, we might have to create a service level agreement that if we initiate a process or a project, we need to have clearly defined roles as to when then that goes to finance and what their roles are so that there's not any miscommunication, understanding what the other area's responsibilities are, et cetera, and it allows us to be more seamless working within each area. We found those to be um, very fruition at the moment between multimodal and project delivery at this time. So it's been working out really well. Um, some of the other items are creating cross-functional partnerships to develop software enhan enhancements. As I talked, some of the issues are technology pieces. So the other side of this is we always wanna know what we're doing. Are we saving time? Are we saving money? Are we saving steps? What does this look like? So another piece of this implementation and initiative process is tracking efficiencies. 
So as we know, every day, not only within the state, not only within um, ODOT, but I'm sure universities, consultants, private sector, employees are doing amazing things, innovative solutions to cut costs, save time, and safely get the job done. But we wanted to start tracking these things. We wanted to see what exactly we were doing out there. And so what we did was try to create a streamlined process for gathering this information. Um, the Office of Innovation has developed a new site for these new successes to be reported as soon as they're established. Um, we ask quite a few different questions of what area is it coming out of, is this a process, a project, um, a solution, things of that nature. Um, and then the Office of Innovation will follow back up with our employees to have those um, in-depth conversations to make sure we're tracking correctly. But again, this is at the, the crux of what we're doing. We want to make sure we're being more efficient and more streamlined with the different changes that we're doing. But there's also the activities out in the field that we all know that um, many times our equipment might not be up to par, things might not be working out, and we have a lot of um, employees out in the field that are very innovative, whether they're welding um, you know, things to assist the front end loader that might not be up to capacity, but we don't have the funding to buy a new one. And they're doing these creative ways to continue doing their job out in the field. We wanna capture that as well. We wanna capture that innovative sense um, that these employees are doing to get the job done. So when we start talking about it, we wanna look at different types of things. So different types of things that have been reported so far, um, and again, this is not all encompassing, but uh, overlaid existing shoulders um, instead of replacing them. This results in a cost savings and decreased construction time. This is one of the projects that we got reported from District 7, um, Mr. J. Erb. Um, shifts to paperless, as we all know, COVID probably pushed us more into that than anything else. Um, but we're trying to reduce the amount of printers we have, um, going paperless, putting things on the cloud, et cetera, which reduces lots of things, as you might not think, printer releases, paper sales, copy paper, ink, things of that nature. Also, we've done project bundling, which allows us to um, award a single contract for multiple projects. We've seen a lot of efficiency as well as savings um, in that activity. And then um, the department as well as the Turnpike Authority is um, attempting to decrease our footprint. Um, and when we say that uh, in regards to our buildings, so we're trying to consolidate, um, eliminate how many leased facilities we have, et cetera, which is also um, seeing efficiencies in its own way. So how do we do this, right? So when we started this, there was a lot of anxiety, there's a lot of stress as to what this means. What is change? You want us to change our processes. You want to shake up my world. And in a sense, the answer is yes, ultimately, um, but for the good. Um, and when we start these implementations, we ask everybody to participate, all the employees that are involved in the area, to make sure that we're getting a holistic view of what the processes are, what need they feel the pain points are, and, and what would work to become more efficient. And so through this, we have to make sure that we're involving um, every area and every department. Um, on top of that, right, discussing their costs, time-saving efficiencies that they're already currently doing, and what other opportunities they feel that they could increase their efficiency. Also, the Office of Innovation, you know, has the task to help facilitate change and continuous improvement, which is where we get normalizing um, this culture of change. It's, it's gonna be here, it's not leaving, we're no longer modernization, it's just our way of life. We continually need to make sure we're trying to improve every day with our processes. Um, and one of the big ways um, that we start looking at things is, let's try something, if it doesn't work, we're not gonna leave it that way. We'll, we'll take some steps back and we'll try something else. We're not gonna leave it broke. We're not gonna leave it you know, as efficient as it can be. We need to reassess instead of kind of that mindset of leaving it the way it is and that's just how it is gonna be for 20 or 30 years. We really want the input. We really want to talk to um, everyone involved to make sure we're doing the best we can. If we don't get it right, we'll backtrack and figure out the next step. But again, that's another part of being communicative, um, customer service, not only to our own employees, but outside of it, and being adaptable to understand. We might not get it right the first time, but we'll continue trying. 
And then again, the other way that we try to measure these things are through the efficiencies. Um, Smartsheet is one of the activities that allows us to um, easily compare data, uh, track trends cabinet-wide, um, and real-time reporting of money saved. So that's one of the platforms that we choose to use as well. So you kind of think, what does this have to do with research, right? Um, as we continue normalizing change within the transportation cabinet, we've got to start pursuing research opportunities, and I know we do um, for the most part, but we have to have both sides of the aisle. Um, it has to be able to allow the department to achieve efficiencies, whether it's in pavement life cycle, emerging technology, and other tools um, that drive the improvements of tomorrow, but we also need to pursue innovative research ideas that create um, improvements in areas such as workforce development, because that's our number one um, goal, right, is um, to train up our workforce. When some go out, we need to have some that are coming in the door trained up and ready to roll. Um, and also knowledge management, which those two things go hand in hand. We have to capture the knowledge before it goes out the door in order to continue doing and maintaining the level, if not at a higher level, uh, of the work we're trying to do for the new workforce coming in. So these are the types of things that um, Joni and myself have been talking about of what we wanna look at research rise, the relationship that we not only have with the two research universities um, in Oklahoma with OSU and OU, but also through the opportunity of the consortium with the UTC um, and those members as well, is what can we do collaboratively how can we um, reach some of these goals, not only for the state of Oklahoma, Region 6 as well, um, to pursue workforce development, knowledge management, but also, like um, we say, li pavement life cycle, the things that we're responsible for infrastructure-wise. It goes hand in hand both ways. So again, I appreciate y'all um, being here today. I appreciate having the opportunity to come talk. I'm hoping that a little bit of this gives insight as to what we've been doing over the last few years. Of course, it's more in depth uh, than just a little bit of a few slides. If you want any information or anything like that, I would be happy to talk at the break. Again, feel free to come up and talk. Otherwise, email. Um, phone calls, text messages, anything like that whatsoever. But again, my door is always open and I appreciate y'all having me here today. Thank you.